Before we get to the video of Noam Chomsky, he has been a vocal critic of wealth inequality. Chomsky argues that economic policies since the 1970s have favored the wealthy, leading to a concentration of wealth and power. This, he says, is fueled by factors like the growing influence of financial markets and institutions, which prioritize short-term profits over long-term investment. Policies that reduce taxes on the wealthy further increase their share of national income. Weakening regulations on corporations allows them to exploit workers and consumers. Now, off to this wonderful clip of Noam Chomsky, and following some views of Chomsky on the impact of wealth inequality and solutions to the problem. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, I'm Vajiha Malik. I'm MIT alumni. Uh, so it was a little awakening for me that U.S. economy works uh, by keeping the rich uh, happy and the poor frightened. But I was just wondering that with capitalism defined as the world order of today, is opposite ever possible, like keeping the poor happy and rich a little bit frightened? <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, you know, what uh, we have today doesn't remotely resemble what's supposed to be capitalism. Uh, capitalism is supposed to be what Jagdish Bhagwati was discussing in this abstract model he had in mind in the op-ed this morning. Uh, and what you study in neoclassical economics with uh, you know, free markets and entrepreneurial initiative and consumer choice, what Greenspan's talking about, but we don't have anything resembling that. Uh, I should say that even that one quote I gave about oligog I can't even say it, oligopolistic competition and strategic integration, et cetera, et cetera, it said that well, that's what we have, not the invisible hand of the market. Well, I don't know how many of you have ever read Wealth of Nations, you know, the famous, which you're supposed to worship at. Uh, but the phrase invisible hand does appear in Wealth of Nations exactly once. And it's an argument against, against what's now called globalization. It's an argument against free movement of capital. As Smith argues, a bad argument that although it'll be very harmful to England, what he cared about, uh, it'll be stopped by an invisible hand because uh, uh, merchants and manufacturers will have a home bias. They'll prefer to uh, invest at home, so don't worry about it, even though it's dangerous. Now, that's the one use of the term in Wealth of Nations. Uh, and, you know, so what we have is nothing like capitalism, but can we have a city, a system in which the poor benefit and the rich don't have to be made happy? Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, it's not a law of nature that uh, the, the economy, hence most of the society and the political system, are uh, in the hands of uh, high concentrations of capital, which are granted by the state. They're granted by state power, enormous rights. You know, the rights that are granted to corporations are an incredible blow against classical liberalism and classical economics. I mean, you know, Adam Smith uh, would turn over in his grave to see what's been granted to these basically totalitarian systems, and they have been basically granted the rights, not only of persons, which is outlandish, but of pathological persons. They are required by law to be utterly pathological. And it's a legal requirement, deeply embedded in Anglo-American corporate law, that the uh, managers of corporations uh, must be brutal. Uh, they must be the kind of persons who we would lock up if they were flesh and blood. They've got to, they're only, they are legally required to maximize profit and market share and not to do anything decent. Uh, the only exception, and this is a long history of corporate law, is they're allowed to do something decent if it's hypocritical. And so if a pharmaceutical corporation wants to improve its image, you know, by giving free drugs to people in Africa or something, it's allowed to do it as long as it's pure hypocrisy. That is, it's a way to improve your image, to increase profit. Otherwise, it's uh, legally culpable. You know? You're much more likely to get thrown in jail for that than uh, you know, Enron-style corruption, uh, because that's really the core of the system. Well, you know, that's just, uh, it's not even legislation. These are just decisions by courts, you know, which have become the core of law. Do we have to accept that? I mean, it's like saying people had to accept Bolshevism or fascism or other kinds of totalitarianism. Of course not. Chomsky believes this concentration of wealth has negative consequences, such as the decline of well-paying manufacturing jobs and stagnant wages for many workers weaken the middle class. The gap between rich and poor widens, making it harder for people from disadvantaged backgrounds to move up economically. 
The wealthy use their money to influence elections and policy, undermining democratic processes. Chomsky advocates for policies that address inequality, such as taxing the wealthy at a higher rate to generate revenue for social programs. Measures like stronger unions and higher minimum wages to improve worker bargaining power. Ensuring corporations are held accountable and don't exploit workers or consumers. Well, I hope you like the video and give the channel a subscribe. If you can check out and subscribe to my other channel, Progressive Movement, link is on the homepage and in the comment section, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you wish to join the channel as a member, that would also be appreciated, thank you. Now, take care and bye-bye.